Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check a new DJI friendly F7 flight controller and a very capable 20 by 20 mm stack by T-Motor. In this video I'm going to go over their features and specs and show you how to set them up using both digital and analog systems. First let's start with the 20 by 20 mm stack. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the flight controller, the 4-in-1 ESC which comes with a pre-soldered 35V 470 microfarad capacitor, a bag with M3 screws, nuts and silicon grommets, a high quality XT60 battery connector with pre-soldered 14 gauge silicon coated wires, a harness for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller, and a JST connector that will enable you to easily connect a DJI Air unit. In terms of specs, the flight controller features an F7 processor, 5 full UART ports, in addition to a 5V BEC, a 10V BEC, which is useful for powering a DJI Air unit, and a dedicated connector for hooking it up. As for the 4-in-1 ESC, its current rating is 45 amperes. It features well-separated motor and battery pads, a built-in current sensor, it's running BLL32 firmware, and just like the flight controller, it can be powered with up to 6S batteries. In addition, the weight of the flight controller is 5.3 grams. The weight of the 4-in-1 ESC, including the capacitor, is 10.9 grams. They are both using 20 by 20 mm M3 mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 27.7 by 29.9 by 6.4 mm. The 4-in-1 ESC is a little bit bigger and its outer dimensions are 33.4 by 39.3 by 6.4 mm and the total weight of the stack, including the GST harness, is 17.1 grams. Now let's quickly go over a couple of guidelines when installing the stack. Next to the micro USB port, you can find dedicated pads for connecting a radio receiver and you can choose whether to power the radio receiver using 3.3 or 5 volts by bridging the center pad with the right one or with the left one. Pay attention that if you are going to leave it unbridged, the ready receiver is not going to be powered up. The easiest way to connect the DJI Air Unit to the flight controller is using the provided JST connector. The Air Unit is going to be powered using the 10V BEC. In order to display the OSD data, you need to enable the MSP switch on UR3 and pay attention that in case you are going to use an external radio receiver, you need to disconnect the yellow wire as it is wired to UART1. On the back of the flight controller, you can find the relevant pads for connecting an analog VTX, and in case you would like to control the 10 volts BEC using an auxiliary switch, you can solder these two pads over here, and then assign an auxiliary switch to the user 1 mode on Betaflight. Pay attention that this feature only applies to the 10 volts pads, which means that in case you would like to use it, you can't use VTXs that only support a DC input voltage of 5 volts. Here you can see what it looks like when the stack is assembled. So it features a slim form factor, and it is quite remarkable that such a small stack can power a 5 inch 6S build. Now let's move on to the newly introduced single sided Pacer F7 flight controller, which actually came as a part of this plug and play build, which as far as I know is still not available. In terms of specs, this flight controller features an F7 processor, a USB Type-C connector, 6 full UART ports, a dedicated connector for a DJI Air unit, in addition to a 10 pins JST connector for connecting the flight controller with a 4-in-1 ESC, you can find the matching pads on the bottom of the flight controller. Most of the pads can be accessed from both top and bottom sides of the flight controller. On its bottom, there are no electronic parts, and pay attention that it only features a 5V BEC and all the 10V pads are just pass-through pads which rely on the fact that you are going to use a 4-in-1 ESC which features a built-in 10V BEC. In addition, the flight controller is using 30.5 by 30.5 mm M3 mounting holes. It weighs 8 grams and its outer dimensions are 40.1 by 39.2 by 7.8 mm. In case you're going to use a DJI Air unit and connect it to the dedicated connector, pay attention that in case you're going to use a 6-pin JST connector, it is connected all the way to the right, as the left pin is an extra ground pin which is not in use. In order to display the OSD data on your DJI goggles, you need to enable the MSP switch on your tree. 
And remember that as I just mentioned, the 10 volts pad is just a pass-through, so in case you are not going to use a supported 4-in-1 ESC, the DJI Air unit is not going to be powered up, so what you can do is to bridge the VBAT and 10 volts pads, but keep in mind that the DJI Air unit can be powered directly with up to 4 rest batteries. As for the rest of the setup, you can wire the ready receiver to the pads which are located on the back of the flight controller, and then power it either using 3.3 or 5 volts. Pay attention that in case you are going to use an SBUS receiver, you will need to use the RX5 pin of the DJI Air Unit connector. Finally, in case you are going to use an analog setup, the VTX and FUB camera are going to be wired to the pads which are located on the front of the flight controller. You can power them either using 10 volts, 5 volts, and VBOT. And in addition, you can also find a dedicated pad for camera control for configuring an analog FUB camera. So overall, the T-Motor Pacer F7 flight controller looks like a pretty good option for a DJI Air Unit setup, but keep in mind that you need to match it with a compatible 4-in-1 ESC since it lacks a 10V BEC. As for the mini stack, as far as I can tell, it looks like a pretty good option for a light 5-inch build. Its main downside, which is subjective, is that it's a little bit on the pricey side since it costs around $100, and soon I'm going to feature it in a build and flight video, so we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.